Hello everybody, my name is Rolock, and welcome back to another episode of Banjo Kazooie. The last episode we finished everything in uh, Mad Monster Mansion, got a couple of more cheats or upgrades as you would probably call them. And we also opened up the next entrance to the next world, which is Rusty Bucket Bay. And in this episode, we're going to be going into it. Okay. So... There is one thing I'm going to do right away. Or a couple things I'm going to do right away. Uh, it's for really anybody who wants to start off on this level. So, this level is quite big. But there's one part in particular that you want to be very careful about. And you also want to prepare for it. So, I'm going to find the correct entrance. Alright, so first you want to head down to this pipe. This is not the right pipe. Maybe slightly forgetful as to where it actually is. Is it this? Not that one. I don't think it's this one. It may seem a bit disorganized for this episode, but I assure you I know what I'm doing. Alright, so yeah, it's just not down here. The. I don't remember what it's called. Avoid this guy. Those guys are invincible no matter what. You can't kill them. So you want to head down this pipe. Uh, collect all the notes here. Now you want to hit this switch. This will become important. Uh, not too later, because we're going to be doing this right away. So what you want to do now is head back up to the surface. You want to go to one of the big smokestacks that are near the middle of the ship. And this one particularly. You want to smash open this door. And we have entered the most dreaded room in the entirety of the game, which is the... Let's call it the engine room. So jumping up, up, up to this, we'll get our first honeycomb piece of the level. Alright, and let's, let's try to do this. So... You may be wondering since the last episode, well, what's so bad about this level? The entirety of the level itself isn't as bad as this room in particular. The engine room is by far the worst level in Banjo-Kazooie, probably in Banjo-Kazooie history. You got these spinning pipes that spin forever and stop for like two seconds. So if you want to actually get across them, you have to be super fast. And they'll sometimes stop at these very awkward angles. There are mumbo tokens over there. I'm not going to grab them because we're at what? 17. Pretty sure I can get enough for the next level. So, what we want to do next... Simply... For that to go by. If you can't tell, there's going to be a lot of waiting in this area. It is very annoying to do so. Also, if you fall down there into that empty pit down there, yeah, it's death. You're not, like, warped anywhere. You're not, like set back anywhere. Now you're just dead. You die instantly. And if you're playing the N64 version, which I am, unfortunately, once you die, everything resets, including your notes. So we're gonna have to go by well, through this without any real issue. Okay. Now, if you hadn't hit the switch over there, in the other room, uh, these fans would be going a bit more faster. So let's grab our first jiggy of the level, which is just getting to the end of the engine room. Now, let's try to get the hardest jiggy in the game. And what we need to do... Actually, I'm going to go on this one first. Now, you want to wait for the fan to slow down just enough. Also, there's a pipe there, but there's like nothing to grab over there, so I don't even bother going across it. Oh, no! Ah! Oh, wait, I'm alive! Nope, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm going to regret coming into this world with only three lives. Alright, I'll meet you guys back where we were. <sighs> okay. So now that we're back, we want to go over here. We want to wait for the fans to stop moving so that we don't kill ourselves. 
Okay. I'm just gonna grab this life because I think it's gonna be actually helpful. God, my palms are already sweating and we barely even started this level. Great. Okay. So once you hit the switch, a timer will start. Now, you want to head over to the other side of this engine room so you can hit another switch because that switch only slows down those propellers. Now, actually, no, the timer doesn't start yet. No! <sighs> okay. So the timer doesn't start until you hit the other one. Really, the fans are the most annoying part about this level. Alright, so, once we hit this switch, the propellers will fully stop. And then, we want to run like hell. You get 65 or 66, I don't remember which. You get a bunch of seconds. Also, the pipe stops spinning, so that's very helpful. So we gotta hurry all the way down here. We gotta wait for this thing to move so we don't kill ourselves. Jump all across. Get on the talent trot and get moving. So once you get to this part, it's pretty much like a cakewalk if you're fast enough. What you do is take out these guys on your way and just head out through the door. Now the correct direction on which to go, it can be a bit uh, distracting. But you want to head immediately to the right and head straight down to the edge of the boat. Once you're at the end of the boat, you want to go immediately downward. Grab the jiggy. And there you have it. You have officially completed the hardest jiggy in the game. Okay. Now that we've done that, we can actually properly introduce the level. So I will see you guys back at the entrance. All right. So welcome to Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, this is our next world. And uh, first of all things, we're going to be going across to these areas over here. Uh, these told two, all you have to do is just put two eggs into it. And in doing so, we'll bring out a platform for us to walk across. But as you realize, there are a couple of collectibles out there in the air, which we can't really collect. But we can. So what we want to do is put six or four more eggs into it and they'll uh, put out some more. We'll grab our mumbo, to mumbo token because we'll be needing that for the next level. Spoiler alert. And I think just over here, yes. You want to smash open this and drop down. Doing so will lead us into this small little container and the jiggy is, there's notes over there, there's the jiggy. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking a bit more about why Rusty Bucket Bay is quite an annoying level. So, aside from the engine room debacle, uh, the water in this, there's, it's obviously a boat, so it's, it's like docked in like a watery area. However, the water is oily, meaning that you'll be losing, for some reason, I don't, I don't think this is how oil water works, oily water works anyway, or it might, I'm not too sure. You will start to lose breath just by swimming above the air. Like, just swimming normally will drain your air meter. And going underwater will drain it even faster. The next thing we want to do is immediately head over to this little area just over here. Heading into this little particular area will spawn a familiar friend. Now we want to quickly head into this small room without dying. Get in there! Awful. These guys are called float sams. They're they're really annoying. Just one rat tat tap will take them out, but they're really annoying. So in this room, we want to take out this grilled chompa. Chompa, I don't remember what they're called. We got a familiar switch from Gobi Valley. It's the exact same switch because they couldn't bother. We, never mind. So that spawns the next honeycomb piece that we have to collect for this level up there. So we'll just go ahead and jump on this flat pad. It's the only flat pad in the level. We'll just fly up here. Oh, nope, come on. Yeah, come on. There we go. All right. Now, an issue with the recording 
is that we are almost above 15 minutes. But we have not been going on for 15 minutes because most of that was just me getting back to where we were when I died. I really need to. So yeah, playing this level, you're going to be doing a lot of this. This is your main transport for the level aside from swimming. Because doing this will actually reduce the amount of air you take while you're swimming and also get you across the water a lot faster than just swimming normally. Then there's, there's also the whole, you know, the engine room thing, which is uh, regarded as the most difficult Jiggy to obtain in the game. Goodbye for- okay, whatever, we'll just grab the Jinjo over here. Get away from us. Combined with all the crazy gears, the cogs turning, and the those pistons twisting and turning, and the pipes, and the fans. The fans are really the only huge annoying part of the engine room. Once you get past those, the entirety of it's pretty simple, pretty easy to get through. Especially since once you hit two switches, the pipes will stop, stop moving. So that makes it a lot more helpful for anybody to get across. But then there's a whole instance of running to the right side and getting underwater correctly and not hitting any walls so you don't stop yourself and then you die by... Oh yeah, if you get chopped up by the blades, you uh... If you get hit by the blades, you die instantly as well. Yeah, this level is really unforgiving. But really, it's only the engine room part that's the most difficult of them all. Anyway, uh, just over here in this toxic waste field... Jump over here. Grab this token. Grab our green Jinjo buddy. Du -du -du. Du -du. And there we go. Alright. Moving on. No, actually, are we near him? Oh, we are. Okay. So, we want to just jump down here. Not that direction. You notice we got a little buddy stuck down here. Trap, help, get this thing off and snorkel. So we're gonna be heading up to the... I don't know, the hull, I guess you can call it. We got a lot of grill chomps on the way. Ow! We'll be collecting those on the back, on our way back. These guys are called, uh, sea grublins. If you remember the purple enemies from the first level, uh, they were called. They were just called normal grublins. These guys are called uh, sea grublins. They're just. They're a bit tougher than the grublins in the first level. You just, they take two normal hits to take out. Anyway, we hit the anchor switch, and even though it clips right through him, he's perfectly fine. So he found this earlier. Now it's ours, and it's our third jiggy, I think. No, it's our it's our fourth jiggy. Because the third was in that little container unit. Go and grab some honeycombs on the way out. Now the annoying part about this level is that it tricks you to go underwater. Like there are collectibles everywhere underwater. Aside from this like jiggy and all, there's also some parts where it's like very difficult to actually get to where you need to go. Much like that. A gated off area to the left. Especially with Chomper in there, which makes it even more annoying. I am going to run out of breath. There we go. Okay. I am just making too many risky choices. Alright, this guy over here, this guy's a boombox. He sees you, he'll just start chasing you. But if you run away, he'll eventually go away. If he gets close to you, or if he chases you for a long amount of time, he'll uh, just blow up. Like, he'll start chasing you, then he'll get a bit, you know, white. He'll get a bit white, then he'll explode after a couple seconds. Alright, entered four eggs into that toll. So now we're just going to be heading over to these blue containers over here. These containers do have some goodies for us. This one in particular has a bunch of notes for us to collect. So a honeycomb hive, I don't think we really need that at the moment though, so I'll just ignore that for now. Over here. Okay, there's nothing in the corner. Jump, jump, jump. Take out this guy, take out that guy, avoid him. 
Trying to get up there. All right. This room is complete. It felt as though there was something crawling on my arm. All right, that one's closed in the front, so we'll just go and head to this one. And I believe this one has... Yep. Okay, yeah, that's not smart. Three eggs. I believe we'll also take them out. Yep. Or you can just let them blow up near you and you'll get an extra life once they all die. Let's go and collect that, because that will be helpful if we do die again, which I don't hope that we do, because I have so many goddamn notes already. And you want to keep your notes up, because there are so many things that can kill you without you knowing. Like the float zams, those guys can be annoying if you don't attack back right away. Anyway, in this containment unit, there are no jiggies to be found, but there is... Take this guy. I believe just over here is our blue ginger. That's an interesting thing about this level is that the uh, the gingos are all located on the edge of the level, like on the outer edges of the level. They're, none of them are going to be on the boat, and none of them are really going to be inside a couple of things except for the blue ginger in this case. Pretty sure that's all we need to obtain in that little area. All right. So as we go over here, we see that the toll is actually on the other side of this platform. So we'll be heading over to this crane just over here. And we're using the shot or jump pad just to jump up and over. We're to grab the notes on our way out. And we want to hit this switch with our beak bar. No, beak barge. And once that happens, that uh, container will be lifted up. We got 16 seconds to uh, head over there. This level also has quite a few timed events. So it's also even more annoying. Just talent trot all the way over there. Just drop down to it. Doesn't really matter. It'll go down to zero, but it won't close until you get out of the way. So there's no real issue in completely dropping down. And hey, we're just halfway through already. This is going great. Okay, now that we've actually, you know, gotten on the boat, uh, this is the Rusty Bucket, by the way, hence Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, so let's explore the boat a bit. All right, we got the kitchen in here. There's a couple of notes for us to collect, as well as a couple of enemies to kill, and yeah, that's about it. Let's take out this guy once more. Get some spilled stew, more notes to collect. Token to collect. And Gruntilda chastising us about it. And a tiny little grill chomper in this fridge. I'm actually low on health. Right. Alright, and I think that's all the notes in this little area. Nope, one left. It's always a good idea to double check before you leave somewhere. Alright. Now, the next point of interest we can go to is, uh, hmm. Oh, just up here. Oh, actually, just through into here. Uh, throughout the sides of the ship, you'll find some, uh, windows that are a bit more see-through than others. Those you can break open, and in doing so will lead you to certain rooms like the captain's room. I am totally going to die in this level again. And I am not prepared for that in the slightest. Break them this, and they're, you know what, I'm just gonna do this. Just to be sure I don't die. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid in this level, it's, it's not good. <laughs> Alright, we'll grab another feather, and we'll be on our way. We'll also be doing one last thing before, uh... How long will this episode be, actually? I'm not entirely certain about that. Uh, let's head into this one first of all. I think there's a couple of notes we can grab. Because I don't actually know how long it took for us to do the engine room, so it might cut down a bit shorter than usual, but if I do a couple more things, it'll be a bit longer than usual ones. And that's good, because I don't want to spend three episodes on this level. Okay, why? 
I just want a nice, I just want a nice run. Can I just get a nice run for this damn level? Can I please? Thank you. Lord Almighty. Why? Okay, I am dumb. Oh, I don't want to die again. Oh, I hate this level so much. <coughs> get out of here. I'm gonna dumb jump everywhere because I'm scared of falling too far. Jesus Christ almighty, where's a bloody honeycomb hive? That would be great to come across. Alright. Yeah, I definitely want to find a honeycomb hive before I go into a hive place. Or I can just kill this guy. There we go. Okay. So I got enough to at least survive a fall. A bit. Now we want to just grab these notes and head across over here. Wait, I know where there's honeycomb. It's inside the engine room, but I don't want to go back inside the engine room because I don't like the engine room. Okay. Just over here are a couple of horns. No, oh, we never actually saw the code. So plastered around plastered somewhere around the level, I think just beyond over there. To the right. And you keep it to the right. There's a code for these, but since I already know the code, it is three. One. Two, one, one, one. And that will give us a jiggy right there and not on top for some reason. All right. I think that's a good part to end it off. Because we've actually been going on for quite a while if we take into account. Because the recording timer says 25 minutes. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take it as a cue to probably stop for now. So we got quite far into this level, despite our uh, slight hindrance near the beginning. So in the next episode of Banjo Kazooie, we're going to be wrapping up everything in Rusty Bucket Bay, then maybe delving deeper into Gruntilda's Lair, finding what we can, seeing if we can find the next world or two, or the next world. There's one more world after this one. See you guys then.